This podcast is brought to you by Joe Lambert Mastering, making the world a better sounding place. For all your audio mastering needs, please visit joelambertmastering.com. Hey, it's Larry Crane. Welcome to the Tape Op Podcast. Issue 81 of Tape Op, in January 2011, we interviewed John Congleton for the first time. John and Tape Op have stayed in touch ever since, and as his career has taken off, he's produced records for St. Vincent, Kimbra, Angel Olsen, Blondie, Goldfrapp, Swans, Nelly Furtado, and Chelsea Wolfe. John and I met up at my studio, Jackpot Recording, while he was in town producing the Decemberist upcoming album, I'll Be Your Girl. It's always great to hang and chat with John, and his endless quest for creativity in the studio is certainly infectious. This audio recording was not originally tracked with the intent of using for a podcast. It was recorded solely for transcription for our print interview. Please forgive any balance issues, background sound, or lack of clarity. Enjoy. You you've had it phenomenal. I mean, I went, I printed out your uh, um, all music thing or something. <laughs> I printed out the last couple. That's cool. This is great because this is like this is like since 2011, right? And it's just like I look at some of these years, and and I know everything's always cascaded from the time before mm-hmm. the release comes out. Mm-hmm. But there's been some years here where you've just been like nonstop. Right. I don't feel like I've ever stopped yeah. since I was, <laughs> you know, nineteen or something. But it's kind of crazy. That's a that's a lot of sessions. It's a lot of production. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much else to do. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have any other hobbies. You know, I have no children. I have no children. Right. You know. I mean, do you have a relationship? Oh yeah, I have a, a girlfriend. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. And she's very understanding. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> no, I mean it's just like I know because I mean I have to spend part of my time doing the magazine. That's how uh-huh. I'm doing this, but like to this kind of output is like severely, you know, that's a just a lot of constant work. Well, I mean, yeah, I I, I do work all the time, but I yeah. also I work really fast. Yeah, I, I think comparatively to a lot of other. You know, dudes and dudettes. I, I make records yeah. a little quicker. Um, yeah, because of our roots. I well, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, like, no money. <laughs> I I made records in basically a vacuum for almost ten years that nobody heard for no money. Right. And um, I really am grateful for that personally because not only I was able to make a billion bad records that nobody heard and nobody <laughs> like a few, the, a few good ones, a few good, there. maybe a few yeah. good ones in there. Yeah. Uh, but you know, by the time I actually started to work with bands that had like immense talent, I, I yeah. kind of knew what I was doing pretty well. Yeah. And, um, um, also I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm grateful that I had real chops in, in, in real like legit engineering chops. Um, Bef- you know, uh, before I really was in a situation where people were really counting on me, you know what right. I mean? And, um, I, I was, I was a fairly, what I would go and say, fairly accomplished engineer long before I ever was asked to produce anything. Yeah. So, um, I didn't even really want to be a producer, producer. I just wanted to record records. Right. And, and it, so it just sort of, people started to ask me to produce. And strangely enough, that's actually when my career really started was when i actually started to feel like i what was getting you, steady work. what would you say the the first batch of records or so or artists that you were really that really kind of helped make that happen for you were uh th- there's this really distinct line i can draw yeah. with i did a, i did a record with this band that very few people remember called 90 day men mm-hmm. that um was an incredibly unique band yeah. from chicago um it was it was one of the only bands i've ever worked with or ever heard even that well there's obviously famous bands that are this way, but like where each member of the band had such a unique personality that there's the, the, you, you could pick them out. Yeah. Every yeah. single person was doing something so specific 
that when they played together, it was something like you'd never heard before. But anyways, right. I was lucky yeah. enough to do one of their records and a lot of other bands liked that record and bands like Explosions in the Sky started coming from that record. And and right. and, and uh, I was lucky enough to make Explosions in the Sky like their most popular record. Um, so it's all just timing right. in a lot of ways. And, and I should say that I did that record in three days. <laughs> Explosions in yeah. the Sky. Yeah, <laughs> recorded Jesus. a mix in three days. So don't tell me that you can't make a successful record in <laughs> a few days. And the band was ready to make that record. Yeah, they had right? been touring the I record. Mean, yeah. You know, I was just the lucky jackass <laughs> that was there. I always feel like that. When, when things go right, you're like, well, anyone could have made that happen. Yeah, I, I, to I've told them that many times. <laughs> I feel that way. But I was happy to be there. Yeah. I mean, I think I was looking back at our, our interview that we did with you whenever that was. Uh, in Tape Up or yeah, the video yeah. interview? Yeah, the, the, no, the, 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 the one tape, in Tape yeah, Up. Yeah, yeah, that was a while ago. From, I don't know what year It was, was probably a good seven years ago, right? At least, yeah. I think so. Maybe more, actually, it was a while come back. to think of it. Yeah. And it's funny because I looked at it and it was like a lot of questions. I'm not going to bash on the on the Shane who wrote it because I don't even know him, I don't think. But but um uh, a lot of the questions were like, what kind of mic would you use on this? Oh, it's what very kind of technical, mic? right? Yeah, it was yeah. just really funny because I was like, I rarely ask those questions myself. Right. So we got that all out of the way. <laughs> yeah, <magazine>. yeah just <laughs> if you want to know about that stuff, just, uh, just read the article. Just read, read the article. And uh, <laughs> my caveat is I've probably changed all my philosophies since I would, then. Absolutely. I mean, that's something when I've interviewed someone and then interviewed them again, mm -hmm. you know, say 10 year gap mm -hmm. or, or so, it's always amazing how different yeah people's perspectives are on, hopefully on this stuff yeah mm. i still put up the same four mics and i just do it mm, yeah <laughs> get out of my face <laughs> yeah i mean microphones gear all that stuff all that nose picking kind of stuff that's that's just i've i've i'm thoroughly convinced that's just to keep us inspired yeah that kind of stuff, uh, you know, it's it's fun to think about. It's fun to get a new piece of gear and play around with it and everything. But at the end sure. of the day, um, it's really just about working with the artists and keeping them comfortable. And that's just to yeah. keep you kind of engaged, a new a new toy, you know. But I, I always find it hard because um, we get sent things to review and mm -hmm. people try to send me stuff and I don't want it 99% mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. It's not because it might not be good gear. Mm -hmm. It's because I want to just use the stuff I already know how it works and I don't want to interrupt the process also with yeah. gear nowadays a lot of it is really complicated i found what kind of stuff have you i mean don't you have to name a product but oh just you know like, like now they, they have devices. so many they have so many units that exist now that are like it's a filter it's a compressor it's a de-esser it's it does so many things yeah um and i just want it to do one thing really well yeah <laughs> yeah there's nothing like an api mic pre with exactly knob, one knob yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I get I get nervous about trying something that I might misunderstand how it worked. Yeah, or you get overzealous because it does something really yeah. interesting, and yeah. you're like, "Oh, that's you know, that's <laughs> compelling." And then you do it, and then you know, a week later, the band's wondering why you know this sounds so goofy. Why does our snare sound like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it sounded good at the time. But that kind of that kind of stuff in mind. When I hear a lot of your productions, I hear a lot of overt manipulation mm -hmm. and, and cool shit too, mm -hmm. though. Like, how do you ride a balance? Like, say you're producing someone, mm -hmm. do you talk about like how are we going to make the drum sound on this? Are we going to use like, you know, gates and mm -hmm. distortion or weird samples or how are we making these things come together? How do you how do you work these kind of arrangements? Uh, I think that it at. I think at this point, usually whenever I'm making a record with a with an artist or a band, they're sort of I've been hired to kind of uh, screw up, screw, screw, screw with the sound a little bit, or yeah. at least make everything not um, typical. Yeah. Um, so that is kind of expected. So some of that stuff is already sort of a foregone conclusion yeah. whenever they talk about why they want to work with me. Right. Um, but. I, I've said this before. This is something I say to most bands. Yeah. It's like we're making a record. Really what we're doing is we're having a conversation the entire mm -hmm. time from when we first talk on the phone several months before, you know, when I get yeah. your demos, we're talking, we're talking day one in the studio. We're talking about this or that we're talking about. It, we're having a long conversation that's developing a shorthand as to what this thing is that we're making. Right. right. So, um, you know, I'll I'll have an opinion, for example, about like, oh, with this song, I think we should have a very dead drum sound. I feel like this song should feel really claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. And so we'll make a bunch of 
micro decisions to serve that macro purpose, you know, like, yeah. you know, I'll put all, all the amps or all, you know, all the microphones or all the drums in the smallest place possible to right. achieve this thing. And, um, and I, I kind of, Honestly, when it comes to sort of the more bizarro things that are on records, they're things I just kind of do. I just yeah. do and just see if the band or artist tells me not to. And and yeah. it's it's if to me it's like it's all about trust. It's like yeah, yeah. I trust you to play your instrument as creatively as and as impassionedly as possible. And I'll tell you if something seems weird to me, and I'm going to try to make this record as interesting as we've agreed we want right. it to be. And, uh, you tell me if I'm going overzealous or whatever, but I also, you yeah. kind of tell them, you know, sometimes I'm going to overdo it and you can tell me to dial, dial yeah. it back, you know? <laughs> yeah. I wonder about that. Like, cause that's always a little bit of a negotiation. Like you bet you're, you're, you know, when we make these records, I always feel like we're not, we are making, we're trying to put ourselves and our opinions and mm -hmm. our concepts and our ideas and as, as producers. And even, even if we're only hired as an engineer, you're still bringing something, but, it's also like a negotiation. Like if, you know, if you go too far, you've lost the artist for sure in it somewhere. And then where do you, where do you draw these lines? I totally agree. But I, th I think that there's always just, you just have to use your instinct and your perception. They hired you for that. So yeah. just go ahead and try to have trust in yourself when it comes to that. And I think that like, one of the things I always think about what I'm trying to do, I try not to work on anything that I don't like. Mm -hmm. Like that I don't, that doesn't move me in some way. Yeah. Um, and usually what I like to do is think about what I feel like makes that artist or that band specifically unique. Right. Their point of view to the universe yeah. artistically. And I just really try to bring that out. And sometimes that's the thing they hate about themselves. I've noticed <laughs> like they're wow. a certain, a certain timbre or a certain mm -hmm. approach in their vocal style sure. that you think is so unique might be the exact same thing that 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 drives them crazy and then right. comes your job to go no you don't understand how brilliant and interesting yeah. this truly is and you really should you know you should believe yeah. I, a lot of a lot of what i do i don't feel like i'm a taskmaster like kind of like yeah. i don't i'm not like telling the drummer he's rushing or dragging <laughs> i'm not that guy at all i'm like you don't understand how cool what this thing is that you do is right and just like let's do more of that let's exaggerate that like i feel like yeah. In the in the in the spectrum of Eno to Mutt Lang, I'm I feel like I'm much more closer to Eno, you know. Yeah. I just I mean, like when I listen to super slick productions like that, they're kind of like exotic zoo animals. Like they're fun to right. e examine, but they don't they don't move me the way that just something idiosyncratic and weird does. Yeah. You know? And that makes sense. So I guess like what, I mean, I, not much really tightens my back up in the studio as far as ideas go, except for cliches, yeah. except for some, <laughs> except for the things that I've heard a million times before. Yeah. And sometimes bands just need somebody there to go. That is too easy. Yeah. To, you I mean, know, telephone vocals. on the bridge. Yeah, exactly. Right you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, there's a million things. It's like, yes, yeah. these things work. They're functional. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, uh, um, I, you know what, this is so funny, but I, I tweeted something today. Uh -oh. I tweeted something today and it's kind of it, like I, I tweeted that nostalgia is the escape hatch for the artistically coward, yeah. artistic, <laughs> art, cowardly artistic or, you know, artistic yeah, yeah. coward. I, right. I, I do think that I think that like yeah. when you get people stuck, stuck on finding the perfect sound or whatever, what they're looking for is something they've already heard before. Right. And isn't it way more interesting to go, I've never heard that before. Yeah. I mean, That's... but people are, I mean, my feeling is musicians are really conservative mm. in general, in mm -hmm. the general. And that, you know, you'll, you'll be doing something, you'll be getting a tone or, or anything simple. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're just getting this pushback from, mm -hmm. from the artist. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's a, mind blowing to me that, you know, the same person would tell you, well, I just love, you know. Radiohead and St. Vincent or something. Right. And you go, well, those people push their boundaries all the right. time. But then I can't like, you know, dial up 3K on your guitar. You right. <laughs> I mean, there's there, there are two sides to that coin, of course, you know. I mean, it, you, you always have to respect the fact that somebody has a vision or what they're comfortable mm -hmm. with. But I when you when you kind of like uh when you kind of peel back that onion a little bit, a lot of times you just find that they they're just fear of the unknown. 
yeah. a little bit. And there are so many great, capable, incredible engineers out there that can help anyone make a very literal record. I, I think that I've <laughs> figured out that maybe th- that um yeah. I, I that's not my station yeah is is um i can do that and i did that for years right as a um, job as a job yeah. um and it's not that i dislike doing that but i think that i might be more valuable to help people um try something different you know yeah. you know i mean keep yourself interested in the process mm-hmm. because for doing this day in day out yeah and and always kind of solving a lot of the same problems mm-hmm. as you do making records mm-hmm. if you were solving problems and not getting to feel like there's any special reason you're there yeah and part of that's part of that process then why are you there for sure there's you know? been plenty of times where i've wondered why i was hired for something <laughs> yeah. when when uh when there was a lot of like uh pushback on things you know yeah. but at the same time I never, ever, ever go into a record if I don't already respect the artist right. and feel like they have a strong point of view. That's, I guess, yeah. the main thing that's important in music to me is the point of view. Is it is it good to have someone like like Adam as a buffer, your manager? Well, I've, I've been with Adam for 11 years now. Right. We have a pretty good relationship. He's a, good guy he's, a, he's a solid, <laughs> solid guy. Um, yeah. um, he, he's incredible. He's yeah. He actually is. He... he um, well, first of all, he will there's a lot of stuff that comes in that he listens to before I listen to it. Right. Um, just because he has more listen in time yeah. available. Yeah. Um, and he will a lot of times tell me, you should really listen to this. I think you'll really like it. Right. He, I think after the years and years of working with me and knowing what type of music I personally am drawn to, right. he, he, uh, he knows whenever I'll be interested in something. Does it help to have someone to help say no as well? To kind of, Oh, well, sorry, there, John's too busy right now. Oh, oh, well, I mean, <laughs> sometimes, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah it, I mean, it's it's nice to not have to be the person who has to write that email <laughs> over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, but I really do try to listen to everything that comes in because yeah. I know how much that would mean to me. Yeah, yeah. So. It's hard to pick, though, isn't it? I mean, very hard. To I pick. mean, you probably have your calendar. Yeah. And you go, I got to take X amount of days off to keep my sanity. Yeah. So there's only enough time for a certain amount of projects a year. Very. I mean, I, I have to turn down most, most things. Yeah. Um, and I say that, you know, with a lot of sadness because there's a lot of things I'd like to do. And especially, yeah. Oh God forbid, if I have a conversation with the band or the artist, yeah. like sometimes we'll just talk just to see if we get along and like, yeah. then it doesn't work out time wise. And that's like a knife to the heart because I've already, I feel like I'm already friends with them and I already understand their hopes and dreams. And you know, like it's, so that's, so sometimes I have to stay away from doing the phone call until it seems like something that I might actually have time to do perhaps, you know, because, because once I do the phone call, Adam knows once I do the phone call, I'm like, Oh, we're best friends. (laughs) I got to do it. It's like dating. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oops, I led them on. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Right. Oh man. Yeah. It's, I, you know, I mean, I get myself, I get busy, but I'm also like, I'm taking all those patches open to work on the mag and things like that. So I kind of like, can usually slot anyone that's asking but I've how started, do you do it i know this don't want to turn the interview around no it's how, how, how do you how do you do it? yeah all right yeah, it's a conversation we're not gonna write all this we would never write all this in the magazine <laughs> well no. what would you how do you how do you allocate so much time a month to the magazine a little bit yeah a little bit i'll, I'll have a note that says start working on editorial <laughs> <laughs> you know so i'll go Ooh, i better take so like four days off right there to just get uh-huh. the first batch of things going uh-huh um but you know then if someone's trying to finish a record i'll kind of be like well i can take one of those days so it gets a little dangerous, you know. Yeah. It can between that and and uh, you know, like I'm going to AAS for trades. So oh yeah, that's real soon, for a right? Bit. Yeah. yeah, next week. Mm. So I, you know, I have things I have to do summer or winter nam, summer nam, AAS show. You know, <laughs> go out and do those. Spend time at that. Um, you know, I'm doing I've got six issues of the magazine every year. They just have to kind of juggle it to make sure there's time. But did you ever do you yeah. did you ever get resentful of the magazine? <sighs> sometimes there's an issue due and I'm just like, Oh fuck. You yeah. know, like I, I don't want to, I'd, I'd rather, you know, I mean, cause there is like a weird irony to it. You're, you were somebody who loved, <laughs> yeah. loved recording and, and you want to record. Right. And, and so you start this magazine that's yeah. sort of like this weird extension of your excitement about the art form. And then it sort of robs but, you. Your it, oh yeah. I mean, I seriously, like, I mean, I look at someone like you or Tucker Martin mm-hmm. 
as we all kind of started doing stuff around the same time, right? Mm -hmm. And if I was just recording, I would probably be more busy and making a lot more records like you guys are. Yeah, but, but everybody knows who you are, Larry. But, but yeah, I'm so I was and, on the cover of Time last month. No. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, you are you are. I think that whenever the chapter yeah. of the of of the last thirty years of modern recording is written, your name will be in there as somebody oh, who uh, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> oh, in 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 nothing but a good way. You you gave people permission to do so much stuff on their own. I think that's yeah. super valuable. Thank you. I yeah. mean, I think that's, uh, raised, being raised by an artist. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Your yeah. parents were artists. My mom yeah. was, yeah, or is, um, uh, yeah. You know, just something about that. I, I mean, I, I have a film deg uh, degree oh, really? in an arts, a minor in art and, and my focus before playing music was, was going to be maybe filmmaking mm -hmm. and documentaries and mm -hmm. things like that. So it's, it's, I'm coming at it. I came at recording from also from an angle of like electronics and synthesis and sound right. manipulation and soundtracks and different things. So I, I've, I've always looked at it a little differently. And I've and, actually yeah. always thought about re records in, in a way that movies in a way uh, and yeah. like the way I think about movies and in, in the fact yeah. that I don't understand movies, I, but I'm, I'm a great admirer and I yeah. don't really want to understand them that much, but I always kind of <laughs> think about it. Like the producer is like the director and the engineer is the director of photography. Yeah. And the band <laughs> is the actor, but it's the actor who wrote the screenplay. Right. You know, yeah, it, totally. it's like, if you think about it that way, it's like, it's an interesting way to compartmentalize I it. I think it is. And the thing that scared me about filmmaking was the amount of people you always had to have available oh, to make a film. God, you, my girlfriend yeah. is an actress. And, yeah, and, she, <laughs> and And she's directed movies and whatnot. And it's, yeah. a, it's a horror show, the kinds of things, that the amount of delegation and diplomacy. I was watching watching a documentary about the making of the Hobbit last night <laughs> and it was like, uh, Oh my God. It's like, you know, Peter Jackson goes into the hospital with an ulcer and everything gets pushed back. Like, and all these people have been Hundreds training and, and waiting dollars, and like, yeah. and they're just waiting for weeks, you know, still working on stuff, but mm -hmm. it was like, it was supposed to start like a month earlier <laughs> or I something. You, yeah, you can't even imagine how much that cost. I mean, it, it was probably all put to good use to help right. the movie be better. They just but made more chain mail or whatever. <laughs> yeah, more knives and swords <laughs> and, and uh, things, thingamajigs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> more mithril or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but it's like, I, I, I was scared of that. And I thought, oh man, making records or being in a band is like instant gratification. Yeah. And then making a record is like, you know, okay, you just need the, the artist and, the, and a producer, engineer. And you can start making a record. That's what's always attracted yeah. to me me about music is you don't really need that many people. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, you can do it yourself. Yeah. And which true. is what I loved about <laughs> that's what I loved about tape op when I started to see it in studios and whatnot. Okay. Was it gave permission to people that they can just you can just you just do this right now, just the same way that I felt like the first Ramones record did to people. Yeah. You know. It just says like So don't uh strip it away, just do it. Yeah, just just get yeah. it done, man. Yeah. And um <laughs> um yeah, so I think that you have a super important place. Maybe it wasn't yeah. what you expected. Exactly. But, you know. The other thing that's weird, too, is like, you know, um, when you make a record, usually you, you finish the record and you get a paycheck. <laughs> and when you do the magazine, you put out an issue and then and then like they, we pay each other out. John and I pay each other out at the end of the year. So... We take a little little monthly or no, every issue we get a little bit of a like a little little stipend or stipend or whatever mm. to help us out mm. and then at the end of the year we'll see well did we make money or lose money oh wow you know we usually make money thankfully it's so that right. but i'm when i make a record i feel like i can get paid right away for a record and it's <laughs> kind of more like oh thank you not yeah. always yeah true and that's why you have adam and that's why i have my studio manager <laughs> i used to feel like i had two jobs one was uh, recording and the second was tracking down the money that it's kind of crazy me. yeah you know and what's crazy about that isn't isn't it that when you do like a super independent release and the band's paying for it, you get paid right away. Oh, always. And then if you work for like you do a record for Sub Pop or somebody, mm -hmm. you just wait and yeah. wait and wait. <laughs> what, what, what? Yeah. What? What is taking so long? I don't understand it. You know. Oh. Yeah. You got what? You got your stuff. Yeah. Oh, the go-betweens manager yeah. took yeah. me for a ride once, man. It was forever to get paid on that record. Yikes. And it was like, I had no money back then. It was like, please just pay me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So those kind of things can be really painful. Yeah. 
that's kind of amazing. But you know, yeah, okay, we're just bitching now. <laughs> this is a nice positive podcast. <laughs> so what what prompted you? What, when did you move from Texas out to LA area? Uh, it's um, or was it just, just a year and a half now? Year and a half. Yeah. Shit. So I'm still. I still don't feel like I live there. Is Stuart still? In, in, uh, he is in Austin, Austin Stuart Sykes. Okay, that's right. We're talking that's about. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's right. I think I ran into him somewhere, and he told me that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. But and, I, yeah. the build, there's still a building in Texas. <laughs> Elmwood Studios is still there. Is really? Yeah. So is anyone you, using it? Uh, my uh, assistant there, uh, Alex Bohr, is doing records there. I went back cool. there and did a record recently. Oh, nice. I mean, I I don't have any reason to, for it not to be there, and I don't yeah. have a, I don't have a, I haven't bought a building or anything in L.A. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what my ultimate plan will be with that. <laughs> so LA's you don't expensive. have a set, you don't have a studio set up. I have there. a place in the back. Uh, like I have a back house. Yeah, um, I got you. and I live next door uh, to a studio, so that helps. Which one? Gus Seifert's studio. Oh no, right. Yeah, nice. you guys recently did an article yeah, with him. Oh, that's right. Somebody mentioned. I think. Uh, I think Jeff mentioned that when he was over interviewing Gus. He said you were next door. Yeah, we were that's neighbors. Funny. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's a little. And oh, Jonathan God. Wilson's uh, right down the street, so we have like a little yeah. producer trifecta. Oh my God! Yeah. yeah, I saw him in the Roger Waters. Yeah, it's tour, great, and, right? Uh, it's yeah. great. Oh my God, yeah. that was great. I just interviewed Dan uh, Mollad, who's in Lucius. Yes, with the the girls are also yes. on that tour. Yes. Yeah, he was it's just a big here LA last crew. week. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. so funny. Yeah. Um, Nigel did uh, Nigel Godrich. I just saw him the yeah. other day. He he works at Gus's studio all the time right. too, and and he works at Jonathan Wilson's right. studio. So. Uh, and he has a house in Los Feliz. So it's the, the the greatest thing about LA actually has been that I'm like actually friends with other producers and engineers now. Like I'm actually right. we hang out. So that's interesting. <laughs> what was it like in Texas? Was well, I was. I feel like I was on an island. I mean, yeah. there was no one around making records. Yeah. Like I was making records. I mean, the, the Stuart, of yeah, course, true. but then Stuart moved and uh, right. But there was no. There's nobody around to like hang out and kind of bitch, you know, about the about the <laughs> recording world with, you know, that was sort of doing the same thing as me. Right, right. Um, so I felt like very much on an island. Um, yeah. But now I'm super grateful to have like this sort of strange fellowship. Right. In L.A. It's great. And there's so I mean, I mean, obviously it's L.A. So you this is to be expected, but there's so much incredible talent out there yeah. and such a great collection of weirdos and great studios to work in. Oh, just throw a rock know. and hit it's one. Nuts. Yeah. 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 Of course they're pretty expensive. But. Yeah. Some of them, <laughs> most of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If they're not expensive, you're in trouble. Uh -huh. <laughs> very, very true. Very true. Yeah. Oh man. So what, what so far have you done records in LA since you're living there? Has that worked I've out? I've done records pretty like much this? exclusively in LA. Yeah. Um, obviously I'm here in Portland right now, but that was sort of because it made more sense for the band for yeah. me to come up here. I've done one record back in Texas since I moved out there. And, uh, Oh geez, there's been. I mean, I've been to been to Chicago, been to Montreal, been yeah. to New York a couple times. You know, been to Europe to do some stuff. But you know, yeah. I mean, traveling about. I've, I'm always going to travel somewhere. Yeah. You know, someone kept telling me the other day. I was talking to someone, and they kept going, "Well, you're living the dream. You're living the dream." And I'm kind of like, "What dream was this? That I, I didn't really remember signing up for a dream." You know, that's very so. interesting. I, I don't feel like that gets talked about too much because there's this thing that you literally would break yourself to pieces to do every day. And then one day you wake up and you're actually doing it. Yeah. But then you realized that you for you you forsaked everything in your yeah. life to get there. You, yeah. you know, you were maybe not good to your family. You were bad in relationships. I know I was, uh, many Two divorces. Yeah. Later. <laughs> right. I know that I, you know, I've been a selfish, selfish man to get to yeah. the point that I am. And about, I would say four or five years ago, I I kind of woke up and said, this is great, but I have nothing else. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I have far exceeded every expectation I ever had as far as doing this. Um, so I got to there, but there's no there there. If you, have, <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you don't have friends and family to share it with, you know, not yeah. to get super morose, but I, I, I think that this is an important thing to tell people that maybe are interested in recording mm -hmm. is that um, there is, there has to be other things in your life. There has yeah. to be balance and whatnot. Yeah. Otherwise you're going to become a shitty engineer and a is shitty that producer. Is part of what made you move to Los Angeles too? Uh, no, not that, really. Um, yeah. That, that was... Um, that was for a change of pace. I was yeah. uh, approaching 40 
yeah. the time, and I decided that it was time to to kick the apple cart over and try something <laughs> new. And I knew that yeah. it only gets harder as you get older. Yeah. And I had had my studio in Texas for eight, nine years, eight years at that point. Yeah. Uh, and I knew that it was <laughs> very easy. It could have been very easy for me to just stay there and make records till I died. Yeah. And uh, so, and I guess in a way it was like, I need to change this up. I gotta, yeah. I gotta fuck myself up and it has <laughs> fucked me up. That's for sure. Um, but it's been great. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't know how you feel about working in other studios, but I love working in other studios because yeah. it makes me, it fucks me up. Right. It makes the, you reassess things. And, and it provides a much more vivid experience of making yeah. the record. It, you also learn things. So it's like, oh, they ha they do this so much more efficiently here, or they yeah. do this definitely not efficiently, you know, yeah. like, you know, those sorts just, of things. I was just down at, at John Bocciglippi's studio mm. in Stenson Beach. Yeah. The, I haven't been there yet. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Here it's great. Yeah. It's, uh, it's. I really liked um, the, the view looking mm. out over the ocean and I, I really enjoyed, I mean, partly when, one of the things that it makes me do is here, I'll kind of do like maybe some of the same mics and the same, we sure. talk about changing sure. and evolving, but sometimes I'll just go, oh, I'll throw those telefunkins up. Uh -huh. They always sound good. Yeah. And I had to look and reassess and use different things on, on, on the record. You know, you're hesitant to grab an EQ and start torquing if you're not totally sure of what you're hearing back. So, mm -hmm. so you kind of try to make sure that maybe you swap the mics out before you change the EQ there you go. or yeah. you do things. And it there just puts you in a good working, yeah. you know, there's like a safety first working method yeah. where you make sure you don't capture anything that isn't going to be workable. Right. Later. I, you know, I used to, every time I would travel to a studio, I would take a huge case of gear with me mm -hmm. and microphones. And now I don't really do that. What would you bring if you were going somewhere right now? Well, you are somewhere right now. I, yeah, you know, I, br I brought a handful of microphones, nothing yeah. nothing fancy, just a few things, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I used to take a lot of stuff, and this is exactly my point, because it's like, no, I'll just use what they have. Yeah. Because that will breed creativeness from me. It always yeah. does. It's like, or uh, it'll make me use microphones that... I've never used before or sure. have thought that, oh, I don't like that microphone. Look, it, yeah. it, like the microphone, <laughs> obviously the microphone, <laughs> the gear, as I've said before, all that stuff is really cool. Yeah, yeah. But a great engineer can work with anything as long, you know, yeah. it's it always starts with the musician and the performance and, oh yeah, you know, I it mean, always the, just, it, it's so much more of that. Arrangement. Focusing yeah. the sounds and yeah. the arrangements right. are so important. I mean, yeah. I assume you get involved. Your records sound like you get involved in the arrangements. Oh. Uh, sometimes I mean, more tonight, than others. I mean, like yeah. with, with some records, it's they come in with nothing, and we yeah. write the record in the studio, or, or right. you know, um, or sometimes they'll be like half the record is written, and then mm. we come up with the rest of it in the studio. Uh, and then there's records where every note is completely pontificated over, and then I just kind of tell them to stop fucking with it. Of course, but, <laughs> yeah. so there's a spectrum. Yeah, yeah, always. definitely. But uh, yeah, no, I definitely get involved in arrangements, and yeah. and this is why I still engineer everything I produce because it's it's. Uh, it's it's always about the way it sounds it's music yeah yeah i don't i it like there are plenty of amazing producers who don't engineer but i don't know how they do it personally <laughs> i have to have my hands in the dirt it's like it's like gardening yeah. or something i know i think about that i've had people ask me like do you produce and i'm like i rarely don't like working with oz on this project right yeah. now is one of the rare occasions where i'm definitely not I mean, I'm still throwing my ideas. Sure, in. yeah. I mean, but I'm not the main producer, right? Um, and I, I really have a hard time. Uh, I would have a hard time always just taking a backseat and only recording or something, right? You know, so I it's just hard for me to, to delineate yeah. the two because, as I said, it's it's always about the way it sounds. And yeah, there's so much more about how it sounds than what microphone or yeah. compressor you put I, on it. Like, I swear to God, here's a here's a weird thought that I always have about this. An amateur, I could give you the same batch of mics, tell you what to put them on. Oh, yeah, I know you exactly what you're getting there, at. You'd put yeah. them on the drums and all the instruments. But if I go out there and put them on the way I want to put them on, it's going to sound better. Okay. Or what I, or now we're getting, I get what I want to hear. I, I don't know what it is, but this is like some, right? this is like the one element of our job that is almost magical to me. Yeah. And I'll give you a perfect example. In the cult of Steve Albini, mm -hmm. there are so many people that I see <laughs> that will, will mic... Steve Albini style drums, like literally by rote, right? Yeah, don't 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 try this at home, kids. Yeah, don't try <laughs> this at home. He's he's he, he, the reason why his the reason why any great engineer's mm. stuff sounds great Glenn is Johns. because yeah, is because of 
perfect example. Yeah. How many people have tried the Beatles miking technique? And it sounds nothing like it. No. It's it's all of these ma- micro decisions, the just your slight perception of everything, yeah. and just how you balance those faders. And for fuck's sake, I think that there's something magical about just the energy that somebody might bring mm-hmm. at the end of the day, because you are 100% right yeah. that you, I could write down exactly what I did and you can do it and it will sound, it'll, it'll sound different. like Larry. It won't yeah. sound like John. We should do that. We should. Just, we sh- that's we a should great idea. Make a list and you walk in one day and set up on the same. But we have the exact same. We <laughs> same have, everything's the same. <laughs> We have to use the same preamps, everything. Wow, that would be fascinating. I bet it'd be totally different. I mean, it would sound you know? similar, but I, yeah. I, I can't imagine that it would sound. I don't know. It, I, I, who you knows? You don't say where. You say what instrument or what part of the kit or whatever well, okay. to put it on, but you don't say where. Okay. Okay. So yeah. to, to yeah. Okay. To you know? take this thought experiment further. <laughs> so so it would be it's complete teardown in between. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, gone. Okay. Yeah. Everything you just have to put them on stands and figure out where to put them. Oh, it would sound same, totally different. Same artist, same instrument. That's a great idea. Same, same song. Players, same song. That's a great idea. <laughs> we just need some extra time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be really telling. Because I really believe that when I go out there, I mean, if I have Adam help me, who's working with you now, mm-hmm. if I have him and I go, here's here's a list, you know, mm-hmm. I'll go out there and I'll, and I'll see where I put things. Like, oh, no, of course not. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> now, he gets great sounds, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I've mixed records. He's tracked and huh? they sound great. But... You know, it'll sound different if I move the mics around, even after he set them up. So yeah. it's the weirdest. It's know. fascinating. I mean, oh, yeah. these are the kinds of things. I'm like a cynic, <laughs> I'm like a cynical dreamer when it comes to music at this point, because I've <laughs> just like you, I've heard so much of it and I've worked so much on it. It's like the little pieces of magic and the things that can't be explained yeah. still yeah. are the things that make me get up every day and still do it. Yeah, you know, like I, big, the things that I just can't explain. I think when when I think of this. Becoming, I kind of touched on this, but becoming like a drudgery or like a job that you're not really into, the thing that keeps you going is that, mm-hmm. that, that weird, like, well, that was a surprising thing that happened today mm-hmm. and it was all very positive mm-hmm. and it helped create great music. Mm-hmm. And that's the joy of this job. If there is one, mm-hmm. you know, that you walk away one day and go, man, like, you know, I didn't think that was even going to work, but I got great sounds and. And the players just really knew how to finesse the song properly, and yeah. everything was great. I mean, it's it's a so great feel lucky. It can be, yeah. It, it, when it when it's when it works, which normally it works, um, it's yeah. it's the greatest feeling in the world. Yeah, you know. What have you had sessions or even just days within sessions in the last couple of years that really still felt like? unproductive or frustrating unproductive yeah i don't feel like i never i i i never don't get it done yeah. ever um there's i've never been involved there's only been one record i've ever done in 20 years of doing it professionally that that where it just went completely pear-shaped and it couldn't be finished and yeah. i don't i don't i am happy to say that i didn't i wasn't responsible for that pear-shapedness but yeah um there are records that you do. I mean, just because this is when you do as many records as, as I've done, um, there are records that you do that you, you feel like you wasn't the greatest match, you know? Yeah. But I never walk away hating anybody or feeling, yeah, yeah. or I never walk <laughs> away feeling um, like I didn't sort of end up loving them, you know, in yeah. some way. The record, the result. The, you know, the, 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 uh, the people, the people. Pe- yeah, yeah. I always end up loving the people yeah. in some way, um, even if they were irritating, you know, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I was like, man, they really had a vision or whatever, and that's yeah. kick ass. Um, I love, I love artistic points of view. Like, mm-hmm. I think that that's what really attracts me to working with anybody as a strong point of view. I keep saying that. Yeah, I don't well, mean to be redundant. I mean, I mean, the worst. I had someone like email me or something about maybe making a record years ago. And they uh-huh. said, I've got some of these songs. I don't even know what kind of style they should be. And I just wanted to get the hell out of there oh, yeah. immediately. Cause I, that's terrifying. Like you have words and the chords <laughs> and you don't know, know what, if it's a reggae song or a disco <laughs> song or like, you know, or, those are even too close. Maybe it's like classical and you know, or to be geekier rock. about it. Like, you know, <laughs> when you mix a, a record and and somebody sends you tracks and there's four bass microphones or four bass oh, tracks yeah, like yeah. you didn't know what you wanted the bass to sound like <laughs> the the fucking oh, bass yeah. you know or you know yeah. like give me i mean it's like 
I can only take your music across the goal line if you ha- if you have some sort of like starting place, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's so hard. It's yeah. like, like I can produce you, but I don't have a vision. You got to help me find your vision. Mm-hmm. If you don't You're the vehicle. Vision. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I <laughs> yeah. mean, uh, we're the vehicle to that vision. Yeah. You know? But man, it's like when someone's just completely floating in space with it and they don't have a, a way to proceed, I don't know what to tell them. You right. Know? I mean, I'm like, I don't, I'm, I could write a drum part, but you, you might not like my style of music <laughs> that I'm going to put on there. Right. It's really confusing to me. I mean, I'm learning, I'm learning which projects to say no to is what uh-huh. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot yeah. of people out there who, who, um, don't, don't know who they are artistically. Yeah. You know? And I can, I can understand that, but at least just find something and glom onto it and try to get, get a leg up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess it's really, that's really just a strange, uh, aside in a way but it's just it's so weird when you get that kind of a feedback from the person that wants you to work with them yeah. it's like like i did not sit here and tell elliot smith or quasi or the go-betweens what their songs should sound like yeah <laughs> you know they, they had a pretty good idea it was a pretty good <laughs> really good fucking idea yeah. what it should sound like you yeah. know and it was more like this to help us facilitate yeah okay i'll be there for that and again as yeah. we just said those records would would not have been the same with somebody else doing it you yeah know? you would and, have made it better so that oh <laughs> bullshit <laughs> um so uh uh let's see what, what was the other question i was going to ask you um with the decemberist record uh, What's the, are you mixing at all? Are you going to be mixing down in LA? I'm going to mix it back in LA, yeah. Excellent. Where at? I'll mix it at my place. At your place? Yeah, in my back house. Are they going to be down there for that? Are you just going to send stuff back and get revision ideas? Yeah. How do you have a, do you have a setup that's super recallable? Yeah, it's pretty recallable. Uh, Right now, I've just, I've been using a a Chandler, a mini mixer Mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of stuff. Um, I mean, in the last couple of years, because the things I've been doing have been long distance so much, but the yeah. band usually goes home yeah. when I start mixing. Yeah. I've had to figure out ways to make it more recallable. Yeah. It's just the way people are making records now. Isn't it? I mean, I, I mean, have to come up with systems here that, that I l- allow that. I prefer just straight up mixing on the desk. And if yeah. people, and if we can do it, that's the way it's done. Yeah. But I also. I kind of, I kind of avoided getting into the super recallable uh, way of doing things because I didn't like the idea of of people like, hey, let's turn the hi hat up one dB and then it'll be a perfect mix. Yeah, yeah. Because of course that's total categorical. Yeah, there's a lot of things that don't really matter. Don't matter. Yeah. Um, but I found that if if you've made a record with me, we've already made all the big decisions by the time we're mixing. Yeah. Um, I really try to cultivate the sounds as much as possible. And I try super hard not to leave a lot of decisions to the mix. Yeah. Um, mixing to me is just what you do at the end of a record. It's not, it's not the, uh, it's not, you know, there's no, no, no chicanery, you know, yeah. I understand that sometimes people want to do that, Yeah. but I normally mix what I produce. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. You know. Have you have you had situations where you produce it all the way through, but they want someone else to mix it? Anytime that's ever happened, that's been the label stepping yeah. in, and it's kind of um, been kind of a more fancy pants sort of scenario where you know the there's you know A and R felt yeah, like yeah. they couldn't get radio play with my fucked up mix or whatever <laughs> you know, which again, of course, yeah. is what crystal ball are you looking into? I'll never yeah. understand. You know? I'm glad other people can see the future for us. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I don't understand if all these people, if they knew how to make, knew how to get shit on the radio, why don't they just make their own songs? Yeah. You know, to be millionaires. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can see sometimes sending stuff out just to see how someone else would get a mm-hmm. perspective on it. Mm-hmm. And I, I get a lot of work where I mix a ton of stuff. Me for too. People Me where too. they recorded yeah. somewhere else and yeah. they just want, they Do want you have some different? What happens for me is people can't afford to me to produce the record, right? So they'll oh, track yeah. it, and then they kind of want me to Do take your, have my take on it. Do your thing, after, which is totally yeah. fine. And sometimes it's a real, yeah. it's real, real fun, you know. I assume that sometimes you get mixing projects where they're much more o- open if if they're talking to you in the first place, and they may not want you to do productiony mix tricks or something. Yeah, I mean. It's always a spectrum, you know, yeah. but I do every now and again, I'll get, I'll get a record and it's like, they'll send me the rough mixes and, and, uh, ultimately at the end of the day, they yeah. just wanted to sound like the rough mix, which yeah. is 100% fine. And I have no problem going, yeah. you know what? Your rough mix is great. Yeah. Just put that out. I know. Um, I have no problem. 
I will say this too. I I run into the equal problem of people will send me stuff and, and, and I don't go and they feel like I don't go far enough. Right. right. You know, where I'm like, Jesus, you know, like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm really going for it. I feel like I'm, I'm destroying the song almost, you know, to totally change or something sometimes, you know, but I mean, so one of the things I do, and this is a trick maybe that people that listen to this might, I, a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll say, okay, on a scale of one to 10, yeah, 10 being like, completely reimagined um and number one being basically unrecognizable from your rough mix just a little more hi-fi what do you want me to do to this that's what that's I'll, good, I'll do a lot you I, know i should try that because I, I used to say and i have this list of questions i said oh, about cool. mixing you know and i'd say the last question i think was like you know how crazy do you want me to go with it and they'd always be like what do you mean and i'm like well i, I should say how far removed from the original yeah, uh, the raw tracks or the raw right. mix. Do you want me to be? Because uh-huh. I, I, st- I took the question out recently because I just couldn't get any good answers back. Fascinating. Another time, I'll do the slightest, most mouse fart manipulation to the track, and and it'll still be too much for them, you know, just because yeah. they're so used to the balance of the rough mix, right? Or they're right, so totally. used to the hyper compressed MP3 yeah. that they've been living with for yeah. you know six months, and that's a real danger. Isn't it's a it? super danger when it's something that really just. I've had rough mixes. I get them like they're sizzly they're brick walled and brick walled yeah. and sizzly, and I go, I don't know if I can match this excitement. Yeah, even but it's, it's it's wrong. Even though it's a, <laughs> the most fatiguing horseshit thing to listen to, yeah. you can't beat the excitement. Yeah, which brings me to the only engineer alive who I feel like is able to synthesize excitement in a way that isn't like completely ear fatiguing to me is Dave Fridman. Like you cannot, you, say, yeah, you cannot, right. you cannot yeah. match that man's intensity. I don't, he's a total magician. He's, he's, uh, yeah. you know, and I, I feel like I'm fairly good friends with him and we've had a lot of conversations and, and he seems to be so, uh, unmysterious about his approach, right. but still at the same time, when I listen to his mixes, I'm like, I don't understand how this man is able to get this to fly out of the speaker like this. Yeah. Not and not that everything should be that way, but it's right. it's it's truly audio audio chicanery to me when I listen to his <laughs> to his, his his stuff. He's, how did um, this get made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's very impressive and, and such yeah. a sweet guy too. Yeah, I, those that's a really good example because I. But I, there are so yeah. many dildos out there trying to do what he does and failing so miserably <laughs> yeah i know it's weird it's like like when okay computer came out uh-huh. and everybody was trying to compress uh over compress the drum tracks and at the most inappropriate ways or mm-hmm. times or when gated drums came out mm-hmm. and they got slapped on you know mm-hmm. you know stupid records that didn't make sense or mm-hmm. i don't know just like there's always a thing that happens Remember that period of time when, like in the late '90s, where everything kind of sounded a little bit like Nine Inch Nails. Everything there was had like the, every, really harsh sounds. Yeah, and, like there was and, this and, weird like, period where yeah. everything kind of sounded like that, and it was like that only worked for one thing. Yeah, <laughs> you have been an artist, sure, and yeah. and you've got is the Nighty Nights? Is that the new? Yeah, the well, newer, is that just projects you're doing? It's or is it a band, band. I I put out some stuff with some friends called the Nighty Night, and then yeah. I did another record that was called John Carlton and okay. the Nighty Night that came oh, out right. about a year ago, and that was mainly me with yeah. some friends just coming in, uh, and they were just demos actually, to be yeah. honest, that were released. <laughs> um, uh, I changed it to John Carlton the Nighty Night because I didn't want to feel like I had to be beholden to a band just because all my friends have they're in other bands, and, right? You know, I didn't want them to. F- get their feelings hurt or something if i <laughs> if i had to play with somebody else and, yeah, and yeah. um but i haven't uh yeah i put out that record and i'll tour every now and again i toured mm-hmm. some last year um cool. i like i like i still like being an artist and playing because it certainly well first of all because i'm an artist i guess yeah. but like <laughs> second of all it's it, it it makes me better at being a producer because sure. you're constantly reminded of how horrifying it is to <laughs> put your you know to record and listen back to your your own, your voice. own voice which is horrendous <laughs> still to this day and yeah. um you know i mean plus touring reminding yeah. myself what that's like i've toured my ass off and my yeah. other band and i I know what it's like. I know what it takes to be in a band. I know yeah. how how much work it really is, and how little glory there is actually to it. Even it, it, even when it's successful or something, it's it can be a grind. I mean, 
Absolutely you know, agree. We were talking about that today in the, in the studio. Like the guy was like, oh, we had a couple of bus tours once. And he was like, it was, I really liked being able to have somewhere to sleep on the, at night and get there and wake up and I'm in the town. And, but that was only a couple of different tours, mm-hmm. you know, and the rest of them, you're in a van. I'm glad I never graduated to the bus because I would have had a hard time going back whenever yeah. shit hit the fan. <laughs> I was always glad that I just did years and years of just van tours. I know. I, I can't imagine. But yeah, you've got to look at the economics of mm-hmm. everything and see to scale it to the proper mm-hmm. venues and what you're doing. Also, not enough people liked my bands. <laughs> there is that as well. <laughs> I think I think that's an interesting point, though, about, about singing and voices. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I've been the front person in bands as well and had to record myself or listen to myself. I fucking hate hearing my voice. Mm-hmm. But to know what it feels like when we're to, to make us more empathetic, hopefully, mm-hmm. when we're producing people, I mm-hmm. assume that. I mean, it seems like most people don't really like the sound of their voice. Most right. people have some sort of problem with it. Yeah. Um, I right. mean, it's not natural. This yeah. is this is a fa- this is a <laughs> not a natural thing to hear your voice played back to you. That is no. a completely yeah. I mean, when did ridiculous that even, construct. Hundred plus years ago was yeah. the first time it ever happened. Right. You know, it's it's completely reasonable to yeah. be repulsed by it if yeah. you think about it. I don't know. Maybe people because of iPhones and things and like. I guess things have, have maybe have people changed. are starting to get where they're really excited. YouTube, they they seem to want to put themselves up there all the time, singing and that's doing a, things. That's a damn good point. Maybe there's it's, these kids it, today, I suppose. It's cultural evolution. Yeah, it's cultural coming, evolution. Yeah, very good. <laughs> do you ever clear like if you got a whole band going on? I ask the singer. Time, do you do you clear people out or? Do I ask the singer because some they, singers like like people around. Like a little feedback. Or yeah, audience. or some people like an audience. Yeah, yeah. most yeah. don't. Yeah, I found most just want to be with me. I've also had singers who wanted to be by themselves. Mm. Um, it's happened a few times where yeah. I, they just want they. I, I sometimes will set up a mobile rig for them. Sure. And they just record themselves. It's yeah. fine with me. Yeah, just pick as long the as it sounds okay, and, and you know. But do you feel like when that happens, you miss a little production? I mean, sometimes it's better just to let somebody try an idea than to yeah. say no and then have them resent you. <laughs> I mean, it's like... No, I want the power. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck power, man. Ugh. So, so, yeah, ugh, that's not worth it. Uh, yeah. Just, just you know, the, uh, you know, okay, you yeah. have you have a 12-part harmony idea. Oh, I don't sure. think I have to record every part of that. Go ahead. Right. You go do that. Get it to where you think it's great, and then right. I'll give you my opinion and... I'll probably love it because it'll be totally far out and weird, you know, right. or I'll tell you it's completely unnecessary and, but I'm glad I got to hear that. Right. You know, they always say it's better to try the idea than to shoot it down. Oh, exactly. You know, yeah. That kind of thing. Just like, you got to do it like some sort of cost benefit analysis quickly in your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, with thinking of stuff like that. I mean, like if you had an assistant engineer, you could be like, Oh, can you just track this? And I'm going to, I do that sometimes. Do do you have assistants very often or, I'm learning to delegate responsibility. Yeah. It's it's a it's a lesson I'm desperately trying to teach myself. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I started. I, I had a pretty good relationship with Alex mm-hmm. uh, in uh, in Dallas. There are a couple people that I've I've gotten um, comfortable with, but I, I found that it's taken a while. It takes a while for me to get comfortable with another engineer. Yeah. To trust that they won't they won't overdo it. It's Honestly, right. like, well, the reason why I would want an assistant or another engineer to work on it is so they will, won't say anything to the artist. Right, right. I want the artist to have complete control in those situations. Right. Like say, and yeah, putting a harmony, like crazy totally like, no, don't say yeah. a word, let them do it. And, yeah. and, uh, and facilitate. then I'll facilitate, be, yeah. be a, a, a genuine engineer in that yeah. way. And, and, uh, and then I'll, I'll listen and, and, yeah. and we'll take it from there. It can be confusing if everyone's throwing their opinions in yeah. or something mm-hmm. absolutely let alone like undermining something maybe you're shooting for right on the production end right so, i mean if they ask that person for an opinion that's yeah. totally fine is that flat or sharp yeah opinion? that's 100 yeah, percent fine yeah. um yeah you know i mean it's you got to be careful with with too many opinions mm-hmm. i i believe because you don't want to dilute things this is the this yeah. is back to that point of view thing that i'm talking about yeah. like how do you make a confident autonomous record well you figure out what the point of view is yeah and you exaggerate that you highlight it and yeah. so if you have like five billion different opinions going on okay I'll give you an example. Yeah. Like you, let's say you have a mix that you're really happy with and the band comes in and they go, holy shit, that mix is amazing. And one member says, I love it. 
can we just try this one thing? And you try that one thing. And then somebody else goes, oh, that's great too. Can we try this one thing? And next thing you know, you have something <laughs> that everyone is okay with, but yeah. doesn't offend or excite anybody, right, which right. is the exact opposite of what I try to do in making right. records. Right. Don't You can't be afraid to offend somebody. Right. Because that th there's an equal and opposite reaction on the other side where it's going to excite people and right. energize people. Yeah. Um, like there's this saying that I heard once that I actually wrote and put on my um, console back in Texas. It's probably still there. And it says, um, to a coward, bravery always looks like stupidity. <laughs> and that's like kind of yeah, a little bit a, of a mantra. Yeah, I like that. Like the mix is not democracy. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not, you know, the it, kick drum is not as important as the lead vocal. Right, you right. You know? Right. Well, unless it specifically... Unless it maybe like, is, and then that's is. the thing, then you know? it is the lead vocal. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I mean, those yeah. decisions made with total yeah. gusto and bravado is yeah. how you make great art, yeah. I think. And a, a, a huge middle finger to the uh, sensibilities of some minority of people. Yeah. Fuck yeah. those people. This is not for them. That's how you make great art, I think. <laughs> yeah. If someone's offended by this, then we've done our job. A little bit. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You bet, man. Yeah, this man. Great. I think this is a good wrapping point, man. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> we took it around. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Thanks for listening. Find us online at tapeop.com, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time.